Councilmember at Large Austin. Present. Councilmember Postma. Present. Bashusta. Present. Fisher. Present. Baskin. Present. Obala. Present. Waller. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Looking for a motion for item number one, adopting the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two is a motion approving the minutes from our April 18th, 2022 meeting. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number three under recognitions and awards is the Discover Austin Annual Report. And Nancy is here to share it with us. I am. Thanks Nancy, so much welcome. for having me. Absolutely. All right. So I think in your packets you all received our annual report. If you want to take a look at that, I'm going to run through it really quick and kind of give you an overview of what we've been up to for the last year. And then I'll give you a sneak peek as what we're working on for 2022. So um, when you start off, you can see that COVID really kind of affected the hospitality world as they did in so many different industries in 2020. And even rolling into 2021, um, travel was still pretty limited. And so that was devastating to our organization, but we tried to take an optimistic um, approach to it. And we created a showstopper. Many of you have seen her, if not driven her. Her name is Petunia, which is from the help of the community members when we had a name that pig contest. And so she is a VW Beetle that's wrapped to look like a pig. She's got 3D eyelashes and her horn squeals like a pig. And so we take her all over the Midwest and you'll see the first couple pages of our annual report show some of the places that she's been. Um, she was out in Sturgis. She's been down to Iowa. She's been to Wisconsin, um, even with the Jolly Green Giant. And so she put on about 10,000 miles in those five months that we rolled with her. And she is actually... Um, right now sitting in the parking lot because she'll be squealing down to Iowa this week as it's National Tourism Week. And so we'll be down in Iowa this week, South Dakota next week, and in Western Wisconsin the following week. So she definitely gets out and about and creates a lot of attention for our community and a lot of photo opportunities. So. Mm -hmm. Um, other things that we did in 2021, um, travel bloggers were still pretty active. We couldn't travel in large groups, but they could go out and travel with their families and write about it so their followers knew. And so we did a couple of those in 2021. Um, on vacation idea, um, one of their quotes is that the city of Austin, Minnesota is rich in history and culture. And if you want to see the home of spam or get the opportunity to enjoy nature at its best, visit Austin. So. Pretty good kudos for some of those travel bloggers as they visited our community. We are still rolling with our 53-foot um, refrigerated semi-trailer. Um, it went out in 2020 as something different, and it is a 10-year project. We're two years into it, and you'll see on page five some of the places that it has been in 2022. Um, a lot of different states that we normally would not be able to promote in, um, Wyoming, Colorado, Vermont, Kentucky, the list goes on and on. And so um, some of the exciting things for our office is when we get a call from somebody who's traveling that said they saw the trailer. We got one um, last week that it was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and we get reports every month as to where it has been. And it's nice to be able to correlate where our information requests are coming from. We see that the trailer had been there earlier that month. So um, super excited that we've got this rolling for, ten, for eight more years. It's a 10 year project. Um, while we had some people that were stay, staying at home for vacations, um, we created a Be a Tourist in Your Own Hometown through your local lens in 2021 and encouraged people to go out and take pictures of some of the amazing things that Austin has. And on page six, you'll see some of those photos that were submitted. Um, we got many thousands or hundreds of different photos highlighting different areas that they thought were the tourist attractions in Austin. So it was nice to see what our own residents considered a tourist attraction in our community. I'm trying to think outside the box. We found out that a lot of people, if they were traveling in 2021, they were traveling by car or truck and not so much airplane. And so we worked with the um, Minnesota Department of Transportation. 
they have the wayside rest in many areas of Minnesota. And so we filled out an application to be able to put like an information station, kind of like a newspaper stand at some of those wayside rest. And we were granted um, three of them along Interstate 90. So if you stop at the wayside rest in Rochester coming towards Austin or in Blue Earth or Albert Lee coming towards Austin, you will see our information there. Um, it was widely successful as we distributed over 3,000 visitor guides in just the short time that we um, had those information stations there. And exciting news, we were just approved two weeks ago that we can keep them there through 2022. So um, we will update our new visitor guide and put them in there and hopefully when people stop there they will consider stopping in Austin shortly after. Um, our visitor guide, we had many of them left over from 2020, um, and so we put this refresh sticker in that said, you know, the events might not be updated, but it's still a pretty awesome place to go and visit, and so those lasted us through August of 2021, and then we reprinted um, new ones, and I think they're all in front of you. You'll kind of see they look like this for 2022, so that's the current one that we're working with right now. But throughout 2021, um, we had 13, over 13,000 of them that were distributed by being displayed. And then we also emailed a bunch of them and we mailed only 300. Um, a lot of the tour and travel that comes into our community in the past was on motor coach buses. Typically we do about 200 of them a year. And in 2021, we only did 58 of them. Um, we're hoping to kind of change that and get back up to closer to 200 for our 2022 numbers. But you will also see that the groups that we welcomed were smaller in size as we welcomed under 1,000 in those 1,000 people in those 58 groups. Um, overnight travelers were funded by lodging tax, and you'll see that our lodging tax did increase over 2020, um, but we are still 35% decline from before the pandemic in 2019. Um, and then you can see our social media um, outreach. You can see it increased both on or all on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Then looking from a little bit wider range, Explore Minnesota Tourism is kind of our, our governing um, tourism organization for the state. They always put out a report, and this one, they're always a year behind, but they say that in 2020, there was $12 billion lost in tour and travel. So um, obviously it affected the tourism industry greatly. And then they kind of break it down by counties on the next page. You'll see that Mauer County, the gross sales from 2019 to 2020, which is the latest report that they have, was down anywhere between 11 and 20%. And when they talk about the hospitality, tourism, they're talking um, not only lodging, but also restaurants. And then on the very last page, you will see our 2021 Board of Directors. And so those are the people that kind of govern our office and help us make the way. And so there are some familiar faces on there. So thank you for, thank them for all that they do to kind of keep us on the straight and narrow as far as tourism goes for our community. Any questions on the annual report before I roll into what's going on for 2022? Council, any questions at this point? No. Go ahead, continue on, Nancy. All right, sounds good. So for 2022, we're trying to stay optimistic and get creative with different things. Um, we did um, design, a, it's called Stay and Play. It's an incentive that we are encouraging people to come to the Austin community. If you bring a group here and it meets all the guidelines, we'll ultimately give you an incentive for coming to Austin. Um, it's been successful so far. We've already had um, some groups that have um, redeemed that and we've got more on the books. The stay and play incentive is actually good through 2024 and so we have the um, Federation of Square Dancers. We just actually signed them. They're coming in 2023. So it's a wide variety of different groups that are coming in but they're coming to stay and they're coming to play here in Austin and so we welcome them all. Um, another thing, with the help of the um, city of Austin, we did hire an employee. Um, her name is Sarah Wilson, and she is doing a lot of prospecting to bring in different groups. She's also helping with some new creative marketing to bring in those groups. Some of you may have seen the new YouTube channel that we have, and so she's posting different videos and that sort of thing on there. Um, and then last but not least, I know the agenda is really long, so I will keep it short and fast. Um, it is National Tourism Week, and so we're doing a new Be a Tourist in Your Own Hometown. It's called the Austin Amazing Race, 
And so if you come to our office and scan the first QR code or clue, it'll take you to seven different tour stops in the city of Austin. And so people can go do that throughout the summer. Something fun to do. Hopefully the weather cooperates and we get a lot of participation. So any questions, comments, anything? I just have a comment, Nancy. I was uh, fortunate enough to be on your board when uh, you transitioned to the job you have now. And I mean, credit to you for putting Austin on a bunch of these lists, whether it's travel blogs or other travel publications that, that lead us into we're the top 10 of several different areas for day visits and other things. So really credit to you and your energy and your creativity for making Discover Austin what it is. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I got to drive Petunia, so I'm not even trying to suck up to drive Petunia <laughs> again. It's just good stuff. Anybody else have anything for Nancy? Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're comfortable with Mike Postman Award now? Absolutely. Good no, she's stuck. Yeah, she's stuck. Order. She has <laughs> wonderful lunches. So but, we'll oh, I, I miss them. <laughs> I miss them. Well, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate all you do. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're uh, moving on to <clears throat> item number uh, five. Uh, adopting a written spending plan for tax. Consent huh? agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, number four. Consent agenda. I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Oh, that motion passes. Uh, now we're moving on to number five. Is a resolution adopting a written spending plan for tax increment financing. Tom? Before council. Before council tonight is a public hearing for adoption of a spending plan for tax increment financing district number 11. Uh, a couple years ago, the state amended the tax increment financing statutes to allow for uh, COVID and other related issues to help with um, enticing construction within communities and jobs. So what this plan is proposed to do, the spending plan that was created by us, Baker Tilly, and our attorneys at Dorsey and Whitney, is a plan to use dollars from tax increment number 11, which is a CRC parcel heading south towards 18th, a square parcel um, all the way down, to use dollars that are sitting in that tax increment plan and tax increment district that aren't needed there. They can then be transferred to another project, to, uh, to uh, the city's funds, in essence, to be used for another project. Uh, this relates to item further down on the agenda, which is an affordable housing project over by the post office. But what this uh, uh, spending plan does is, if approved by council after the public hearing, we send it to the state of Minnesota and would allow us then to use dollars sitting in the tax increment district for which we have no additional need for because the uh, infrastructure has been paid for, to then be used for another project that entices construction and affordable housing is one that it would also qualify for. So again, this is a public hearing just to use up to about $548,000 of dollars sitting in TIF District 11 for a future project. At this point in time, we've identified as the affordable as an affordable housing project. And Tom, since there's a public hearing, where does anybody in the public have a comment regarding item number five? I do. You can step forward, Jason, please. And then Jason, give us your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Jason Colbert, 211 Second Street, Southeast. Um, I'm just wondering, Mr. Dankert, if that's referring to my neighborhood. The spending of those dollars could go to your neighborhood. Number 11 on the agenda is a specific agenda item related okay. to that, for which this is proposed to be some of the funding for that project okay so yes and no yes it is okay um, so i just i don't want to speak no, before yeah, this okay. and if this affordable housing doesn't project doesn't go through we could still use it for another project um, but at this point in time mm. we've targeted it for that project so do you okay. prefer to wait till the number 11 jason before your comments that's that right yeah. okay thank you all right council looking for a resolution for item number uh five please so, so moved second <laughs> Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Tobala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0. Thank you. Number six, resolution reviewing the tax abatement application for Caleb Setsi. Uh, approval or denial of abatement would be 6A. Craig? I think you may remember this is for a home value, estimated value at $757,000 being. Nature's Ridge 3rd edition, uh, so it's nice to see that one getting kicked off. 
Uh, this is in conformance with our adopted policy, and this is a public hearing. We need approval or denial. Council, any questions for open up to the public? If not, is anybody here from the public which wishes to speak on item number six on this tax abatement? If not, looking for resolution for item number six. Move to approve. I second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number seven is public hearing on street improvement assessment for 5th Ave Northwest from 40th Street Northwest to the dead end and 40th Street Northwest from Oakland Avenue West to 5th Ave Northwest, project number 22108. The amount to be assessed is $159,035 at 3.75% for 15 years. Mitch? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this project we kind of went through a couple weeks ago with the presentation on what we're planning to do there. Essentially, we're paving an existing gravel road and turning it into an asphalt road. Um, we have not received any written objections to the assessment, um, so I guess we can, I can go over any questions you have about the project or open it up to the public. Uh, I see that you were a little bit uh, underestimated by about what? 500 bucks, you can't yeah, be close to that I, I right apologize now. for that. <laughs> no, that's good because I think the assessments went out as an estimate and based on what you thought it was going to cost and it came it, in. It was very, very close, close to, to yeah. that number, yes. So very good. Um, so there was no written objections. So we can move on to item number 7A presentation. The part where we did that. Call for objections. There are none. No objections today in-house. And... Uh, so we need, I guess, a motion or a resolution from number seven, A, B, and C, C being a motion to adjourn and continue the hearing on those properties there's written objections and there are none. So we're just looking for a resolution to move this forward. So move the resolution. Second. Uh, Tom? And there's also, I'm sorry, resolution declaring the cost. Yeah. This is 7D. 7D, resolution declaring the cost, please. And this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone, anyone in the audience. From the public? Yeah. I thought I asked that. Anybody here on, want to speak in this matter? Paving of a gravel road? Okay, looking for resolution for item number 7D, declaring the cost. I had Fisher and Baskin. Okay, then Tom. Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 7E is a resolution adopting the assessment rule. So move the resolution. Second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Under bid openings, item number eight, resolution receiving bid for the 40th Street Northwest and 5th Ave Northwest paving project. Stephen, Mitch. <coughs> so this is the same project. Um, we actually bid the project, um, I think it was in February or March. Um, so we've had the bids on hand for a while. We were just waiting for uh, the public hearings to see if this would go forward and we would recommend awarding the project to Eulen Brothers. They were the only bidder that we received bids from. Okay, thank you. Council, any questions? If not, looking for a resolution awarding the bid to Ewan. So moved. I second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number nine looks like we're going to need a motion to reject a bid for the Cedar River Siphon project. Stephen? Yes, this is the project we've been working on with WHKS to replace a 100-year-old siphon underneath the Cedar River near Dresner Park. Um, you know, some different factors led to the results of the bid. We only had one bidder on the project. The bid from Elkhart Construction came in at $1,757,953.10. That was about three times the engineer's estimate. So we feel our best option is to reject this bid and rebid the project during hopefully a better bidding climate. Maybe that is late fall, early winter for a summer 2023 construction time period. Uh, hoping to get multiple bidders involved to make a little more competitive bidding atmosphere and in hopes then to bring the cost down on the overall project. 
Uh, our estimate may have been a little bit low, but we don't feel that it was three times lower than the bid amount. So based on the fact that we only had one bidder on this project, we don't feel that it's a, a solid bid amount and would therefore recommend rejecting the bids and uh, allowing the engineering department to reevaluate and rebid this project at a later date. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions, Mr. Lyon? Otherwise, look look for our motion for item number nine. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries on to petitions and requests. Item number 10 is a resolution approving a contract with Bird Rides Incorporated. Craig. Uh, thank you, Mayor members. Uh, we've been approached by Bird Rides uh, to provide 75 stand up scooters throughout the community. Um, they uh, coined this as being sort of folks' last mile to be able to use a transportation option on that last mile. They would utilize apps and uh, geolocate uh, technology on each uh, device. There's no responsibility for the city. Um, there are, are also local representatives with BIRD that will tend to the scooters, put them back in place, um, those sorts of things, and charge their batteries and the like. So they're, they'd be working with someone locally on that. Um, they are legally able to operate on our roadway currently. Um, Average cost for a ride, I'm told, is about $6. Communities such as Albert Lee and New Alm already use those, and I think uh, I was told they have uh, scooters in over 520 cities globally. Um, there's There would be no access to our trail system. There is a winter hibernation period from November 15th to April 1st. Uh, each, has, uh, each entity has the right of a 30-day notice for cancellation. And uh, we'd need an option of the included MOU in the packet. Julianne Roller is with Bird, and she's joined us via Zoom. And happy to have her add some comments that I may have missed and answer any questions that council may have. And Chief McKee, can you, you did your due diligence, called the Albert Lee chief, and they've had him for two years without too much issue or issue? <clears throat> Yeah, Craig discussed it with me, and as he said, by Minnesota state statute, there's already a statute that regulates and allows for this type of vehicle to operate on our roadways. It's a little bit different than um, when we looked at the UTV ordinance, which is something a city needed to approve. Uh, any one of you could go out and buy one of these scooters and operate it under state law uh, as it is now. And so in that regard, I don't have any concern because of existing statute. We did uh, communicate with Albert Lee, who has them, and... Um, and really no no problems that uh, concern me were, were raised with them. It does sound like this particular vendor understands the risks associated with the, the business types that they have, as well as getting them picked up and returned to where they need to be, and uh, we will trust that uh, the vendor is going to be able to do that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments? Council? Do we have a, a play... A, is there going to be certain places that they're kind of returned to after charging and tending? Have we, and have we worked with, I guess, how did we decide what those look like? Yeah, I think uh, we'll have Ms. Roller comment on that, probably be more helpful. Julianne, do you, did you hear that question? Julianne? Still on mute. You're on mute. <coughs> I thought I was done saying that. I guess it's <laughs> 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 well. Um, as I understand it, the, they'll monitor all the locations of them, and then put them in strategic locations which have a higher demand of use. Okay. So they'll track that and then place them accordingly. How they would get that <clears throat> initially out of the gate, I'm not sure, but um, she says she's having trouble with her audio there. Okay. Well, I think I, I was in Albert Lee last week and I saw three or four of them parked downtown and I'm assuming they will be, like Craig said, strategically located where they could be used the best and they're still not allowed on our trails or sidewalks, just the city, city streets. Are they, um, <clears throat> what's the age limit? I think you're old enough. <laughs> barely, just barely. I don't know, I'm assuming, is there like a age limit, you know, McKeek? I'd have to pull up the statute. I, I thought part of the statute does talk about maybe a, a certain age where a helmet's required off the top of my head. I don't know if Mr. Byram has it up. Um, but there might be, outside of a helmeting rule, um, I'd have to look at the statute specifically. I, I do think 
And again, if uh, Ms. Roller is able to hear, you know, it's tied to, uh, you at least need a credit card to try to activate it. I don't believe you can simply walk up as a 12 year old un unless you've been provided with one by your parents, which I don't think any of us would do at least, but. <laughs> well, um, actually, you, you need a smartphone. It's an app on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we've got Julianne on the phone here. But that's and Julianne, the question is, exactly. is there an age limit to ride yeah. the scooters? Yeah. Yes, um, so all riders are required to be 18 years or older to sign up for the app on their phone. Okay, 18 or older, sign up for the app. Okay. And they had a question earlier about how initially they would be um, positioned and, and uh, located for use. Yes, so we would be partnering with a local community member, um, an entrepreneur or a small business um, already local to Austin. Um, and so they would know the community well uh, to deploy those scooters in the, those initial locations. So the first few weeks are a little bit of trial and error there. We kind of place them in a few different places to see where the best utilization is um, and then base it off that um, as we kind of continue operations. Um, so it might change a little bit. That said, if you have suggestions, we're happy to abide by those too. Okay, thank you. Any questions, Council? Anything else? All right, then we're looking for a motion to approve or deny the contract of Birds Ride Incorporated. I move to approve. I second. Okay. Uh, resolution time, please. Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you, Julianne. All right, Thank you. moving on to item number 11, uh, reviewing the first and third apartments proposal. Taggart? Thank you, Mayor, Council. All right, what we're doing here tonight is we're reviewing a proposal, 40 units. Um, when we were at the rec work session, it was 39. Uh, it is 40 now. Susan will touch base a little bit on that. She's been working with the architect on preliminary drawings and kind of layout and stuff. So uh, Susan from Three Rivers Action will touch base on that a little bit. What we're looking at is uh, the HRA owns the majority of the block um, just directly east of the post office here in Austin. Um, there is a, another property still on that block. So this proposal is uh, will be put to the north of that. It's uh, now one thing I want to remember, have everyone remember why we're here. This is we're just trying to improve the steps so Three Rivers can turn this in as an application for a tax credit project. So this is no guaranteed project. All we're doing is checking the boxes to submit an application to have this be as a possibility. So for your unit underground parking, three stories. Um, it's a mix between one, two, three, and four um, bedrooms. Um, $16 million project. Um, I will turn it over to Susan, kind of talk a little more of the details on it, and then uh, Mr. Danker can touch on the, any of the finance questions anyone has. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> hey there, welcome. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Taggart and uh, Mayor and the Council. Uh, it's good to be here tonight talking about a new uh, <laughs> affordable housing, workforce housing project here in Austin. Um, I think as many of you know, uh, Three Rivers Community Action is a regional human services nonprofit that's been around for over 50 years. Um, we provide a variety of services, including energy assistance, Head Start, transit, senior programs. Um, and over the last couple of decades, we've also um, acted as a nonprofit housing developer. Um, in communities in Southeast Minnesota, we've developed over 800 affordable housing units um, in the last couple of decades. Um, tonight, we're talking about the first and third uh, apartment building, and Tager gave a good uh, brief summary of uh, kind of the, the outlines of the project. Uh, it is 40 units. Um, we've been kind of working with the architect over the last few weeks to um, really refine the design and um, 
you know, kind of put together a solid proposal for the Minnesota Housing uh, Tax Credit uh, request for proposals that's coming up this July. Um, so it's 40 units, workforce housing, a mix of one, two, three, and four bedroom units. Uh, uh, there will be a community room, um, a property management office, as well as a services office. Um, three stories above ground with underground parking. Um, the building will include an elevator and also incorporate universal design elements, so all 40 units will meet universal design requirements. Um, it will also be certified through the Energy Star multifamily um, new construction program, so it will be energy efficient, um, water efficient uh, and, and meet a lot of other green communities criteria. Um, as Taggart mentioned, we did make some changes based on some feedback uh, from the HRA and the neighboring property owner. Um, we shifted the design a bit so that the driveway into the underground parking uh, now parallels 3rd Street Southeast, so the east uh, perimeter of the property. Um, we also changed the parking spaces. The, most of the, the parking is underground, but there are some surface parking. And those units will now, um, when someone's pulling in, their headlights will face towards our building rather than uh, towards the, the neighboring property. Um, if you, I know you've got some preliminary designs in your packet. You can see that there's a pretty ample green space areas where, well as playground um, and a patio that is adjacent to the community room. Um, as I mentioned, this provides workforce housing to families that are earning 60% of area median income or below. Um, we anticipate that rents will start at $775 for one bedroom up to approximately $1,200 for four bedroom units. Um, we will have four units that uh, will provide permanent supportive housing for, for households that have uh, experienced homelessness. Uh, and five units will be set aside with, for persons with disabilities. Uh, and as I mentioned, the on-site services will be provided. Um, <coughs> The property will be professionally managed by Lloyd Management. They currently manage our Fox Point property here in Austin, as well as all of our other properties in Southeast Minnesota. Um, if the project is successful uh, in uh, getting an award of tax credits, uh, we apply in July of this year. We hear from um, MHFA in December of this year. So construction at the earliest would start uh, late summer, fall of 2023, and units would be leased in 2024. Um, as Taggart and, and Tom and I have discussed uh, uh, quite a bit over the past few weeks and months, uh, this project scores really well. I think it will, I, the Minnesota housing RFP is always very competitive. One in four, one in five projects typically get fun, gets funding um, and is awarded tax credits. But this project has a lot of things going for it in terms of location, the size of the units, community development, um, and universal design and sustainability aspects. The other really key component to scoring well is uh, financial readiness leverage other contributions. And that's the TIF and those other contributions that the HRA is making, the city is making, the Hormel Foundation has agreed to make, uh, as well as Mauer County. Um, those contributions are absolutely critical in helping us to score well um, and to make this project competitive. So I appreciate your consideration of supporting this project, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Council, any questions? It's great to have that community support, though. I get that, that financial buy-in has got to be a, it elevates us a little bit. So I'm super hopeful. It would be a great, great project. And I'm happy to see you squeeze one more apartment out of it. Last week, now you got 40. I like even numbers. So. But, yeah. <laughs> Originally, you were looking at about 49 or 47 in the building well, costs. Or? Yeah. In the very preliminary early scheme, we had 48. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we were um, sort of looking at the site, looking at the construction costs, and we're at 39, and now we're at 40. Okay. And able to keep that underground parking is important, mm -hmm. too. All right. C Council, any questions? Um, 
Uh, Mayor? Sure. Oh, thank you for a presentation. I think this is our system growing. We need uh, additional homes and, you know, apartments. So, and, you know, I'm a very big supporter of this. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's been like seeing the proposal come out. We don't know anything yet. We are very hopeful. So everyone is excited about it. So <laughs> thank you for your support. And uh, you will get my support on this. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I just have a comment, a couple comments too. It's really good to see you back. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> good to be here. Um, and I'm totally pulling for this project. I'm going to have to abstain from any voting though because I work for the management company. So, but I uh, I support it 100. percent And the only thing that I'm kind of disappointed in is that they're not going to name it Taggart Towers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw that on there. <laughs> for that third and first fun. instead. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> thank you for coming back. Considered a lot of creative yeah. options. <laughs> yeah. Tiger Towers has such a nice ring. Doesn't to it? it? <laughs> we got a plaque that has that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a commemorative. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I would like to piggyback on Joyce's comment. Thank you for hanging with us. I know the last one, with we had a, a kind of a split decision on a market rate versus a low to moderate on a site, and I'm pleased that you, you hung with Austin, and, and we hope to have both here Great. with this project going forward. We're hopeful. Yeah, and kudos to Taggart, too, for really, I think you stayed on top of this and pursued this and, and kind yeah. of didn't let it drop, too, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, you know, both of you. Thank you. Yeah, very thank much. you for all the work that you guys do, you know, Tom, that the foundation, everybody, because you think about me, you talk to other communities across the state, and we're not the only one that has a housing issue, no. and there's not a <laughs> silver bullet, right? So it's like communities have to be smart and creative and strategic with how we do it, and we really appreciate the approach that you guys have and yeah. helping us mm -hmm. tick away at the <laughs> issue. No, we appreciate it. Austin is a great community to work in, so we All right. Happy well, thank to you. And, and now... Uh, Mr. Colbert, you want to step forward when, on this project? Jason uh, is the remaining property owner on that same site. Mr. Colbert, uh, name and address just for the record, please. Jason Colbert, 211 2nd Street Southeast. I'm glad to hear, and I'm also a proponent of this place. I know there's a need. Mr. Mr. Craig Clark got a hold of us uh, around 2015, letting us know about the need for this uh, type of housing here in, in town. Um, I'm not here to stand in the way of this. My wife and I have many concerns. Um, it sounds, uh, first of all, we just want to make sure that we will be offered something for our home in this market. Um, I don't know if this is going to happen with or without me. Um, if it does happen with me, um, we have some major um, questions and concerns about privacy, um, light pollution, um, and many other things. Um, I've spoken with a few of you here on the, on the city council, um, including you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Austin, my wife has approached you. My wife and I have called you Mr. Fisher. Um, and also I've spoken with Taggart, Mr. Medgarden. And I, I, I don't want this to be me against the world here, and I don't. Uh, but we really need to sit down and discuss these issues. Also, uh, there are many studies done um, that you may not be aware of. I'm sure the guy here from this from Three Rivers may know some of them. But there are some crime issues that we're concerned about, traffic uh, issues. Because as you know, that I don't know how many parking stalls will be on the ground and how many vehicles will have to park around the block. It's an already congested area with the post office being there. The um, city plaza already have issues getting that cleared. Um, that being said, uh, we just want to be considered. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, we want to make sure we're accommodating all our residents, Jason, and you're no different. Uh, you, nobody's going to kick you out of your home. Uh, the project can go forward without without with you staying where you're at, or you could be offered whatever the appraisal, however that works. Taggart maybe could want to speak more, but we have a realtor, a local realtor that we use to give these uh, appra homeowners appraisals, uh, try to get maximum dollar for you, and at the same, you know, to considering what the project overall is about. So those four homes, of those four homes, three were already purchased, and uh, you could be certainly get an entertain. We did. We certainly do an assessment and appraisal and what and what we'd give you for money right. at any time prior to I suppose the construction going on. So I just ask that you get with Taggart if you're looking for um, that number. Okay. Um, that being said, I have spoken with uh, somebody from the Faber agency here in town. Uh, we received a letter from Mr. Felton. Um, I spoke to somebody else this afternoon, okay. the man that sold me my home uh, back in 2013. Um, I'm really curious as to how long these plans and plans like these have been um, in the works when, and maybe why I wasn't approached and told about these things when I purchased my home. Um, yeah, I don't know anybody has that crystal ball yet, Jason. But that's fine. That's fine. Um, I do have one more question about Mr. Fisher and his association with HRA and how he can be on the city council uh, and represent both entities and and how he's going to be m my ward. Yeah, we, we have the HRA boards have a representative from each ward. So there's three folks on the HRA commission that serve just like we serve, like Mr. Postman is on the Discover Austin. We have a lot of boards okay. that we, so it's not just Mr. Fisher, it's two others okay. that represent that. So when I call Mr. Fisher, how come he knew nothing about the plans that uh, Mr. Madgarden had been making? You know, I guess my response... We on the city council I, and yeah. also on the HRA board and then... He can, um, maybe he can speak for himself. <coughs> These projects come up once in a while, and there's not a lot of, you don't want to gin people up too early either, so you just might not have been aware of it either. Uh, Taggart, you want to answer this one? You, we talked about this. I think there were some legalities and... and well, you're referring to last time. Right. So the, la the last time that when the project come up that Paul didn't know it is just open law meeting because we had already discussed it with some of our other board members. So I couldn't at that time until we actually had a public meeting. So. Okay. Yeah, it could have just been a timing issue then, Jason. This is a relatively new new project as it goes. There was one considered on that property. Well, we've had that property in consideration for a while, but once the YMCA site went to uh, the, the private market, it became a more lucrative property for the low to, low to moderate workforce housing project. Okay. Very fluid, but I think the folks are trying to do everybody right on this, and, and we want to make sure that you get what you want. If that house, if you want to sell it, we'd certainly entertain a decent offer, and if you want to stay, nobody's kicking you out either. And I think accommodations are being made, according to Susan, to try to limit the impact on you, whether the headlight's coming forward, not coming towards your house. Uh, maybe there could be some landscape, whatever it might be. I think we could accommodate those kind of things. Do you have a photo of the area? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Could this be put on? We've got it. We've got it, we've got it in our back. Anybody have this here? Yeah. We have it. All right, so is this new compared to what you gave me, Mr. Yeah. Is this Wednesday? This now has 40 units in, it in the driveway oh, entry. Mode. My letter said 39. Yep. That um, wasn't. <laughs> This is new to me, okay? Um, okay. We can discuss this later, I mean, in more depth. If you, if I don't you, want to take up the no, time. Again, Jason, if you choose, if you you choose, choose to sell, sell then... This is all new to me right now. now if, you, if you want to, uh, us to give you an offer on your home, talk to Mr. Taggart, uh, Medgarden, and he'll take care of that. Um, that. Otherwise, appreciate, appreciate your comments, and nobody will uh, make you move. You want know, to stay there, you can certainly stay there. All right, thank, thank you. you, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. And Jason, these just came out Friday. The redistribution, the, the architects got them quick done for us. So 
They literally just came out Friday. We held up. We held up the packet to get right. them. So I understand. <laughs> Apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I could just make a quick comment. Sure. I, I know crime was mentioned. Um, Fox Point, I believe, was developed by the same group. It's managed by the the same company that would manage this. Um, and I think for TIF district reasons, I do provide you some statistics. I know last March this came up when I provided Tom with some statistics. I also actually had a police chief from a, another agency reach out where there was a project going in October. I visited with staff both times. Anecdotally, no problems have ever been brought to me about Fox Point, about traffic, about crime, about it operating any differently than any other part of our city or any other apartment complex in our city. And I know in querying our folks both in March and in October specifically about it, nothing stood out, nothing uh, it was not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, area for us, I know from a traffic standpoint, I think that's actually a little more blocked off from some traffic routes based on its location out there. Uh, but we've we've had, had no issues with it. And I don't know if I can bring my... You know, I actually ended my email with, again, if the city of Boston were to partner with them on another project, I would not have any law enforcement concerns based on how Fox Point is currently operating. So certainly, again, uh, you know, we, we take a look at those things from our perspective, uh, but, but Fox Point has, has not been an issue for us. And uh, from a law enforcement perspective, uh, we would certainly support projects like these going forward with the, the developer and with the management company. Thank you. I, I can touch on that a little bit too because I'll be taking over if this all happens I'll be taking over management of that property as well. I work for the management company and For years I managed the Twin Towers downtown um, And I know what it's like and that you have to stay on top of things and I had zero tolerance there. So um, It will be the same at this new property as well <laughs> Thank you Joyce I just want to touch too on the Fox Point development just north of it in the same block. There's actually new housing development mm -hmm. going there as well. So mm -hmm. that's the Riverland yeah, the project River. too. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you, Tiger. Thank you, Chief McKeegan, for your perspective on that too. And on the parking, I'm assuming with the underground parking, the plan is that every all the parking for this facility is going to be off street. Right. Yeah. Right. All of it. Yes. I'm sorry. There will be some surface parking. Some, surface. some yes. surface, mostly underground, I'm assuming visitors maybe, and yeah. Yeah. there might be some visitors that might have to park on the street. Maybe I guess in each, each most of it is one gonna stall be. underground. We're, so we're between the underground parking is approximately 50 some units, 50 some spaces, and then 20 oh, okay. so. spaces on the property. So, uh, you know, there'll be one to one for every unit underground, um, and then total there'll be at least 1.5 to one unit. Okay. Spaces. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, council, looking for a resolution from. Re Hold on, Tom's going. Tom, I can add a couple of things. The parking was one thing we had talked about earlier. Susan and her staff and said we could save over a million dollars. I think it was like 1.3 million to put it all surface parking. But hmm. you know, in Taggart, in our discussion and discussion with you know the mayor, we thought we felt very strongly that because of the neighborhood, because of the neighbors there, it'd be very important to keep as many cars as hmm. possible underground. Good. Okay. Um, so that was kind of why the the costs are a little more than normal. We're, they're still spending over four hundred thousand dollars per unit mm -hmm. for these projects. So if you've been to Fox Point, you can see the quality they build, which is part of the reason, or the main reason we invited or asked Susan if she'd be interested in another project back in Austin. Um, they're phenomenal to work with for the HRA and staff for us. As Chief McKeegan said, they're managed well. We have, I believe Joyce will still manage it well, now that she works for Lloyd. <laughs> um, <laughs> And we believe that, you know, based on, on their applications and how strong they've been in their application process, that they're a good fit for our community and have a proven okay. track record. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Tom, question for you just on the financials, make sure I'm adding it up right. So it's like, what, $1.45 all in for the city? So it's the six fifteen for the loan, $300,000 grant, and then the five forty eight dollars or whatever from the TIF district, right? Correct. So if Think we, about that, right? Yep. If we have the, if we looked at the resolution, so 11A, the resolution approves the council uh, for committing to creating a TIF district. If, if we want to get the tax credits approved before we go through any creation of TIF district, but our estimates are minimum about six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars of pay as you go TIF, meaning we will give them the six fifteen up front. 
as they pay tax to help with the project, as they pay taxes, we keep them and repay ourselves. In addition to that, an additional 300000 because we believe the valuation will rise as time goes, or the tax rate of the city county school will rise. And as, as, goes, as those goes up, there's additional tax increment. So we're not guaranteeing that 300 will come back over the 26 year period, but based on our history with other tax increment districts, we think we're gonna get the majority, if not all of it back. So that first one is 615 plus 300 or $915,000. The second resolution, 11B, is for the additional funding. 540,000 would come from that TIF district we talked about earlier that we adopted a new spending plan. Normally, under, under the TIF laws, when it's all said and done, TIF district um, expires, we give that money back to the county because it's more money than we projected than we anticipated, and the county would split that city, county, school, and give it back, dispersed it. Under the law change, it allows us to take this and put it in an affordable housing project that also generates construction jobs. So that's additional 540 coming out of our pocket. Then finally, there is um, an additional $10,000 we've got down there as a contribution for city legal costs. Legal, working with Dorsey and Whitney to draft these spending plans, et cetera, has a cost to it. We can include that as a contribution from our end to help with their, their points. We work closely with Susan and she worked closely with Taggart and MHFA to create a TIF plan or to create a financing plan that maximizes the points and maximizes what they call contribution points so we can get as ma the maximum points we think allowed in order to rank this project in the top tier. And I think as Susan had mentioned, the other project we had looked at um, at the former YMCA site, based on the preliminary points you had estimated, or that you guys had pegged on it, it would have been funded in that funding scenario. And I think in our conversations with Susan on this project, we score what, preliminary like four points less, primarily location and size of units are now 40 to 40, but it's still a very strong application that we're, you know, fingers are crossed, you never know who else is gonna apply, but our fingers are crossed that based on this funding and this formula, um, that it would be funded. And then in addition is the 600,000 coming from the Lama Foundation. That's actually a grant to the city, then the city gives it to them. So yes, your math is correct, basically. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> uh, all right, looking at, uh, well, uh, under question. Oh, who has, yeah, have, oh, sure. One thing I'd sure. Like With the acquisition of my property, I believe that you guys could do a lot more. I just wanted to say that. I mean, um, you, you could put in your 60 unit, your 80 unit, and have the whole thing. And I think that's probably a little more ex acceptable to, to all of you. I mean, I think there's an opportunity here for us to do this. I think um, any homeowner, Jason, we all want more for our money, but we also have to recall this is city money, so we gotta be responsible and kind of pay what the markets bear. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that you have a need for more housing and you could do it with the acquisition of my property. I'm not asking, you, you, none of you even know how much I want. Nobody's ever offered me anything in, in five, six years. I think the opportunity was I don't, presented. I don't know how you, I believe the you opportunity go ahead <clears throat> and buy three properties and, and not offer me anything. That's uh, all I want to okay. say. I understood it to be that you were, present, you were offered or at least given some information that you, you would be given an offer, but. Nobody's offered me anything. Okay, you want an offer, work with Taggart, please. Okay. Well, and What's that? Appraisal. Appraisal. Appraisal value. It, okay. Where, where we're oh, at. You offer due to an appraisal. Okay. Okay. I'll, the I'll the, the project okay. has come along to this at this point in time because of the timing of the tax credits. The application has to be in July. Yeah. Three Rivers had to make the determination for the architect drawings, the schematics, yeah. and the estimated costs so that they could figure out, we could help figure out the financing. They had a drop dead date. We got to know. Okay. So in this project, we knew what the HRA owned. Uh, Mr. Colbert's property is a wild card. We don't own it. We don't know what he wants for it. I think, as Tiger said, he offered to get an appraisal on it. But the timing is, we had we, we had to, in essence, make a move. decision. I had to move and on three years okay. made the decision okay. um, so to go with as year, is. Right? Okay, thank you. There's always next year. If we, uh, if we put in yes, the if, if, 
Well, well let's, let's, let's say if the tax credits go <laughs> through, then we're done. I mean, the project is 40 units, et cetera. Okay. If the tax credits are not approved this time, it's kind of like Fox Point was a two-year project. Year one, it was not, didn't rank high enough to get the tax credits. Year two, the same exact project got the tax credits. Mm -hmm. So in this year, if the tax credits do not get approved, then there's an opportunity in future years to maybe add that and make it 60 or whatever Three Rivers thinks they can, they can um, build. But at this point in time, that's, that'd be a year off project for, again, you spend significant dollars in architect plans, drawings, et cetera. Um, so at this point in time, they just had to make a decision. And this is just checking our box for getting the 40 unit proposal right now. So looking for a number 11A, a resolution in support of the first and third apartment tax credit application. So move. I second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Abstain. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0. Your Thank you, Tom. Item number 11B is a resolution in support of the first and third department's additional funding. I move the resolution. Second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Abstain. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. And finally, on that item number 11C, is a motion approving the letter in support from the mayor for the tax credit application. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Moving on to item number 12, reviewing the preservation of the right to establish a redevelopment district. Taggart, anything further on this to speak about? Um, the item for number 12 is to preserve our right to create a future tax increment district and be able to capture costs that the HRA has incurred to date on the project. In a greenfield site, for, or for an affordable housing site, we can build, you can build it anywhere and all those costs are eligible for reimbursement. Okay. If for some reason this affordable housing site doesn't go there and we want to do a redevelopment project, then we have to document costs already associated with it in order for us to have a chance to get those back out of a future development. So what item number 12A and 12B does is A is um, documents that the three built, three structures that Taggart and his staff went through are, uh, are substandard. And then 12B will pass a resolution authorizing to document these costs in the event we do need a redevelopment district down the road. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Tom. So item number 12A, we need a resolution finding that the parcels are occupied by structurally substandard buildings. So move. Second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 12B is a resolution authorizing reimbursement from tax increment pursuant to an interfund loan for advance of certain HRA costs in connection with a tax increment financing district within Municipal Development District Number 1. So move. Second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Tom. Item number 13 is affirming, uh, as a resolution, affirming participation in the Office of the State Auditor's Voluntary 2022 Performance Measurement Program. Tom? These. The State of Minnesota still has the. Um, what they call it the 2022 performance measurement program. As you may be aware, we have in the past participated in the survey and the, in the through the state's process through our website, which allows people to um, rate, rank, uh, and comment on city services. It's the state of Minnesota provides 0.14 or 14 cents per capita in additional LGA if we go through the process. Um, which amounts to us about an extra $3,600 of local government aid. Um, I think some of the comments from the elected officials in the past are we only get about usually 200 to 250 comments on it. So is that a, a good reference uh, uh, of the city's um, residents? Um, could it be better? Yeah, we could always do better surveys. But this, what this does is allows us to get some additional local government aid and just get citizens' impact uh, or 
um, thoughts on some of the basic services we do. Uh, so we'd request council approve uh, participating in this new resolution um, for the city of Austin. Excellent, thanks Tom. Might as well get what we can get. Item number 13 is resolution affirming uh, participation in that, that voluntary performance measurement program. Your so, so move the resolution. Second. Yeah. Council, council member Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Council member at large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 14 is a motion approving additional funding for the senior center parking lot and sidewalk replacement project, Tom. Joan Hansen's here from the Senior Center. They approached us regarding some improvements at the Senior Center. Um, Mitch Wenham is here also, and his staff were out literally measuring for the program, the project, so they could get it out. Um, when we got a frantic run over from Teresa there saying, hey, stop, 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 we'd like you to look at some additional items. Um, the additional items were adding a patio on the southwest side of the building. In, a, in addition to what we had scheduled. So Mr. Wenham and his staff took a look at the project and included some uh, maps behind there um, that show what, are the, what the proposal is going to entail for us to bid out. Uh, what will happen is the entire front will have new sidewalk, the entire front from east to west. In addition to that, we'll have some additional um, handicap ramps added in there in the dark pink. And then there's also some spots within that uh, parking lot that the um, contract would propose to not only resurface, mill and overlay the entire parking lot, but also fix some areas that have, appear to have some deeper damage in them. Uh, Mr. Wenham has proposed to um, put all downspouts to drain underground in the storm sewer system as opposed to where they are now, which is run over the sidewalk, creates problems on the sidewalk, and has created the problems in the parking lot area. In addition to that, um, Senior Center has asked for us to uh, run conduit from the building all the way out to the southeast corner of the building for a potential future lighted sign, electronic sign out there. So since we got it dug up, we might as well put that in um, at this point in time. Um, we met with the Senior Center Board of Directors, Mitch and myself, to uh, discuss the proposal and the plans with them. Um, the 80,000 had been set aside at the end of last year's for project for this, but as you can see in the first, first series of, of work to be performed, the actual cost is estimated now at about $97,000, which also includes repair of a lot of sidewalk um, panels that we hadn't planned on originally. Item box number two, totaling about $20,255. Our estimated um, supply costs to do a lot of the underground, <coughs> the downspouts, et cetera. However, Mitch and Stephen's staff will actually do that installation with their labor. This is just purely the pipe and cost related to that. We're proposing under, under the program for us to fund the first two items, the $97,000 and the $20,255. In addition to that, the Senior Center has asked for this new patio, some fencing, and that electrical conduit of an estimated cost of $20,895 that in meeting with the Senior Center Board said they would pay for that if we could do the rest of it. Um, Joan, if you want to, got any other comments, I'll introduce you as the new Senior Center Director. Oh, great. Um, so, fire away. Oh, hello everyone. It's great to see you. And I, I've been with the Senior Center now for a month. They haven't locked the doors on me yet, so I, I'm still here. The parking lot, if, if you've been to the Senior Center, is in desperate need of repair. Um, we joke that it could have a water feature or we could have ATV races in it, but it's, it's in pretty bad shape. So any support you could give to us would be greatly appreciated. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. <coughs> All right, Council, any questions on item number 14? If well, not, I'll say as I worked with Joan for a number of years, and she's awesome. So <laughs> welcome. We're glad to have you. Right. And a big thank you to Mitch and his staff. I mean, he put a lot of time into this. We certainly appreciate Excellent. it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sounds like a well-needed project. Uh, looking for a motion for item number 14. So move. Second. Tom? Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Item number 15 is approving the contract with uh, flashing thunder, thunder, thunder fireworks. Uh, for, was it $33,000, Craig? 
Yes, that's right, uh, Mr. Mayor. Members, we have a bang up contract here with an additional $30,000 above what we normally budget. If you'd approved, I'm sure it would sparkle with the community. Mm. We're asking for approval. You went a long way for that one, Craig. You got it. Yeah. Um, so, yes, 4th of July. Was, we, I know last year got a heck of a lot of remarks on the amount of fireworks. So, doing again this year, looking for approval on the contract item number 15 on a resolution. So moved. Second. Tom? Councilmember Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Sounds like I get another opportunity to try to kill Chief McCoy on this one. The next one, the six, uh, item number 16 is a motion approving city's participation in the 2022 recycling project or recycling event. <laughs> Last year I bloodied him very good. Does that mean we can get you both on the volunteer list again? I'm on it. 9 o'clock. Great. I'm at 8.30. I'm on it. So this year, after 10 years, uh, the city staff had been working with Moore County Public Works. We had kind of been heading up the electronics recycling. But this year, we've turned that over to the Moore County, and they're heading it up. But we're still assisting in all the same ways that we did before with uh, providing uh, one staff person to help with the event as well as a uh, forklift and helping coordinate volunteers. The event this year is scheduled for May 14th. It is, uh, that is a Saturday. And what turns out to be the second Saturday of May, that's kind of been our standard for when we've been holding this event from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Uh, it'll be at the fairgrounds and there are some costs for dropping off items. So there's information that's been put out there by Moore County um, through websites, Facebook, things like that, that give those rates if anyone is looking for those ahead of time. Um, so with that, we would, there are some advertising costs, about $500 to the city. So we'd request approval to use those funds for advertising and allocate uh, some of our equipment toward the event. And then also just another reminder to, if you are interested and available to volunteer, we're always looking for help and volunteers at this event. Excellent event. 11th year already. Can't believe it. Uh, Council, any questions? Steven, is there a way in the advertising that we could let folks know that they don't need to line up an hour ahead of time, that it goes for five hours? I remember last year being a little surprised as to the roads that were blocked with folks waiting in line. But if you don't line up an hour before, you're not going to be first. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and you can roll that in at about 10.30 without a line. Uh, yeah. Any time <laughs> around 11 o'clock or after, if you show up then, you'll roll right in. If you get there any time before that, you'll likely have to wait up to an hour. Uh, so It is crazy. It really was. Right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Looking forward to that event. Looking for a motion by number 16. So moved. Aye, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Item number 17, the authorize, authorizing the request for qualifications for United States Economic Development Administration study. Craig. Um, I guess we're just looking for approval on that. If council could uh, authorize that request, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Item number 17, resolution, council. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Tom? Council, <coughs> council member Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number 18 is a resolution designating election judges and polling places for 2022 elections. And Tom, your Ann's proxy tonight? Yes. Uh, Ms. Kazel has asked me to ask Council to approve the attached resolution which names the election judges that have completed training for the upcoming elections and to designate the poll places for um, the upcoming elections. And again, as Ann had noted in there, we thank those members of the citizens, the community who are being judges. We could not do this without all their help. Excellent. Thank you, Council. Any questions for Mr. Dankert? And looking for a resolution for 18. So moved. Second. Tom? Council Member Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 19 is granting the planning and zoning department the power to contract for the removal of junk and or legally stored vehicles at the following locations. 19A is a motion for property 804 First Avenue Northwest, the Padilla property. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. Item number 18 or 19B is a motion for the property uh, located at 808 First Avenue Northwest, the Gallardo property. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 19C, property located at 1605 12th Street Southwest, the Rivera property. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. On to the portion of the agenda where citizens can address the council with something that wasn't on the agenda. Any citizens here wishing to speak? Tim, come on forward and just state your name and address, please, for the record. Tim Sorgene, uh, 505 11th Avenue Northwest. Um, hear about the intersection of 6th and 10th Southeast. It's kind of a conglomeration of many projects, and right now, it's a four-way stop, and one of the stop signs still has sandbags on it from like two years ago, and it's, it's not even the legal eight-foot height. They started out with orange flags on each of the stop signs and a four-way stop in the middle when there was um, a diversion. And then as the diversion uh, was fixed, they decided to leave the four-way stop signs, but they took the four-way uh, reminder sign out of the middle of the road, and over time, the flags have disappeared. Now, they threw up a, a crosswalk on one side for people to use, but there's no crosswalks to get to it, so it rarely gets used, and even if it does, as of, as of this time, Today, it doesn't beep and it does it for the blind people and it doesn't work. So we're stuck with this situation and I have videotape from today where there was at least four cars going through the intersection at a high rate of speed, way over 30 to 40 miles an hour. And it was only two days ago where the, another accident hit and a lady was trapped in the car and it literally was, you know, eight inches away from hitting the baby seat. Now, I personally have witnessed a, a little girl get hit by the bike and the person leave the scene, multiple car accidents where I've had to cut them out of the car, and this happens on a repetitive basis day after day. Mm. And it's such an ambiguous situation that people assume that they're just going to be able to go mm. north and south. And uh, either we've... A couple of suggestions would be a stop sign that had LEDs around it, a perimeter and a motion sensor, so when people came by, it would blink and remind them. That's one way, whether that's legal in the city, not in the county, I don't know that. Or just remove the stop sign for the north and south and have a reminder for the people to double check before they cross, knowing that they're not trusting that this, they're gonna stop for the stop sign. What was the intersection? It's this new parking, a new stop sign right outside of like little Buffy the cow. Yes, Sixth okay. Avenue and Tenth Drive Southeast, yeah. where you turn to go to Ellis there. Yeah. And they're coming in at a high rate of speed, and I think the chief could attest to the, you know, very high amount of accidents there. And that's where we put the stop signs. I can't. I'm, I'd go through that intersection, oh, six times a day. I do see an officer that sits there once in a while back that keeps an eye on traffic. I have never seen an issue. Uh, Tim, I, you know, I do appreciate it. I think what I'm... I have the videotape, yeah, so I do I think it's, you know, as many as you want to see. It, it is relatively a new four-way stop, but I think I, I, I just want to speak for the council. I appreciate you coming forward with those, and I would think the council would agree. We'll, we'll leave that in the capable hands of our police chief and our engineer to either stripe it, okay. put sign, bigger sign up. Right now, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Thank you for looking Appreciate at it. Appreciate it. And just a quick comment on the scooter amendment. I, I truly believe scooters are for kids. And if you've got a permit to drive a car, I think you should be allowed to be able to drive a permit. You know, teachers in the road, give them a helmet and let them have fun. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, on to uh, honorary council members. We, I did. Oh, <coughs> sure. Step forward, please. Name and address. And you're commenting on the. On the stop. Stop sign. Okay. I live on that corner. Okay. And it, what Tim didn't really uh, get through. Name and address, please, for the Brian record. Brian Press, I live in, by Trimble. 
Uh, what, what he didn't really get through to you is that people are running that stop sign, whether you see it or not, and they're running it at 30, 40 miles an hour, and people assume they're going to stop. And when they don't, somebody's going to get hurt bad. That kid's lucky she didn't get killed. And a little light around that sign, yeah. or maybe one hanging in the middle, I recommend that you continue running that stop sign, because if there is a crash, it'll be a low impact crash. So for that matter, kids can use that crosswalk. Normally they have to wait for the cars to whip by. Um, like he just said, we got videotape of them four times today, 30 miles an hour right through there. And the traffic before and after, we're at jeopardy of them getting slammed. It just happened to be they weren't there at the right time. So some blink of lights or something, maybe some undercover enforcement with an unmarked car so that people getting tickets would get around and people would understand you got to stop. Yeah. Somebody's going to get hurt bad. So thank you. Thanks for your attention. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. We'll try to do our best to take care of that. All right. Uh, honorary council members, we have none. Um, Report and recommendation, uh, Craig? Uh, I don't have anything Julie Kleinfelter does, though. And she is not here right now. Oh. Anybody else? Or step out. Anybody else have anything from Department no. Heads? OK. We can maybe get back to her if we go through the council right. dates and she's here. Uh -huh. Council, Joyce? Nothing, thank you. Thank you. Mike? Nothing. Rebecca? Nothing, Your Honor. Jeff? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. Julie's going to have to hurry. <laughs> uh, somebody please say something. <laughs> well, happy birthday to Councilwoman uh, Joyce Bishop, sir. Thanks. Yesterday, yep. <laughs> You're old enough for a scooter then. Hey, congrats. <laughs> yeah. Just made it. Just made it, yeah. Just made it. Well, thank you. Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, so two things. One is I have much more confidence in my kids on a scooter than I have on myself on a scooter. So there's something to that. But no, and uh, also number two is, you know, just want to thank city staff for the tremendous amount of work that goes into preparing for, I mean, every meeting, but especially a meeting like tonight. I mean, this, there's a lot of stuff here, and it's not like it just kind of shows up 30 seconds before we talk about it. There's obviously a ton of work and energy, so mm -hmm. thank you for that. Great. I agree. Thanks, Jason. Well, nothing, Your Honor. Oh, Mayor, I'm sorry, I lied. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I'll compliment her since she's not here. And, uh, I had a chance to go through the election judge training for the first time last mm -hmm. week, and um, a lot of folks in the room, and a lot of people with really good, um, you know, good questions that came from a good place and are eager to serve, and uh, just really looking forward to being part of that process this year for the first time. So kudos to Ann and her staff; they did a great job with that. Seems like got a good turnout of election judges. That's awesome too. Well, thank you, Mike. All right. I have nothing else. I'm looking for a, a motion to adjourn to Monday, May 16th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? 